G'day, it's Robbie here again. Well, I've had a few inquiries lately uh, as to what's happening with the, the little LPG uh, 10kg gas cylinder uh, melting furnace that I'm making up. And I've got to the stage where I'm adding the, the perlite mix into it to insulate it. And I've done the lid, I'll show you that. And then I've put it in the bottom, brought that up to the level of the, the plate, steel plate in the bottom that the crucible will, will, will stand on. And uh, yeah, I'll move in on that and I'll show you. So yeah, that's pretty much how it will be. And then I'll use this flower pot as a former. And then I'll fill in all around it with uh, the perlite mix. Let it harden. It's going to take quite a while to, to harden. I'll say probably a week, you know. And then once it's hardened, we just pull it out and then we'll have the, the cavity there for the crucible to go, to go into. So that should work out pretty good, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going okay. I had a bit of a delay. I had to wait while the brother-in-law brought down the perlite from the farm. There's a bag of that here. He had a, he's got a whole heap of it up there. It's a dog food bag. You can see how light this stuff is. It's as light as anything, you know. And, uh, yeah, they reckon it's, well, I looked it up on Wikipedia and they reckon it's made out of volcanic rock. When you handle this stuff, you really want to wear a dust mask because it's quite, it gets in your lungs a bit, so, you know, without a mask, it's fairly powdery, so, um, yeah. And I'm just mixing that at four parts perlite to one part refractory cement. This is the stuff I'm using, Davco Lanco 156 high temperature mortar. It's, uh, it looks a bit like that, it's just, looks like cement actually. Well, it probably is <laughs> mostly cement. It's a pre-mix and you just, you just use it. So uh, I'm not sure I've got quite enough. I think that bag is not going to go the distance, so I'll probably have to get another bag of it. I think that was about, uh, I think that was about $17 a bag from memory. And, uh, and I'm just scooping it out with this stainless steel beaker I've got. So I do one of these and then four scoops of the perlite and I'm just mixing up in this wash tub that I picked up off the side of the road. Once again, you know, you can pick up a lot of good stuff off the side of the road like wash tubs. Um, yeah, you know, that's a good handy thing. You can drain you can drain car engine oil into that. And then you get this, this is old microwave cookware. Well, it's nice and clean microwave cookware. I've got a couple of those I picked up off the side of the road. And uh, here's a smaller one, and they're great for sorting nuts and bolts out in, you know. So, just because it's cookware, well, who cares? I mean, people throw this stuff out. You know, you get a lot of overseas students, and they live here, you know, while they study, then they go home and they've got cookware and stuff, and they just stick it out in the footpath, you know, for people to grab because they can't take it with them and it's not worth trying to sell it. And you can pick up all this stuff and use it in your workshop, and it's, it's really, really handy, really good. That's better than seeing it go down to the dump, you know, they could get the council would just throw it down the bloody dump, you know. I hate seeing stuff wasted, I'd rather recycle it, you know. It's uh, a lot better for the environment and you can save some money and what the hell, you know. Yeah, save the planet. Here's the lid, you can see I've uh, filled it all in and it did a good job, it came out really nice. Yeah, it's setting quite good. A bit of weight in this, you know, once you, once you uh, put it in, that's why having the wheels on it is going to be a great, uh, great asset, you know. And uh, oh, I put a, yeah, you saw that tag, that tab I put on there. I, uh, I put another tab on the, the, the actual bottom bit too, so that I could lock it in position. Uh, that's meant to stop it swinging one way, but I put another tab outside which uh, acts like a tongue you know tongue and groove and it 
keeps it in position. So when you're wheeling it around, oh, it's raining at the moment. Oh. Strange old weather we're getting these days. One other thing in the shop that's quite handy is uh, this little light. Remember, I re reviewed this a while back. It's a flexible LED light, 240 volt. And you can move it around, it's got a magnetic base. And it's handy for putting on lathes and stuff, but I've got lights on lathes anyway. And I thought, you know, this would be really handy f for an intense light on the bench. And it's brilliant, you know, look, it really, it really lights stuff up great. It's, it's, you want a strong light at times, you know. It's much better than just the fluoro, and it wasn't very expensive, but it's a, it's a really good light, you know. And you can move it around, do what you like. So yeah, they're worth buying, they're really good. Excellent. Moving on. Well, that's about it for what's happening with the furnace. I'll give you a bit of an update uh, while we're here on that uh, cardboard insert for aluminium. I had a bit more of a, of a play around with it after I did the video. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to that. Yeah, well, here's where it did the really nice job on the um, treadmill roller. This is quite stringy steel you know you saw it, it was streamering and that's to do with the steel not the insert profile I've never actually been able to machine this without getting streamers off of it it's a strange sort of steel but um, you can see that was the factory finish and we did a lot better than the factory finish even with even with a normal just TCMT but then when we when we went to the aluminium insert boy that did a mighty good finish I mean that's fantastic that really is the best. Anyway, after I chopped the video, I I played around with it a bit more, and this is some really basic mild steel, and you can see it's done a nice job on that. You know that, that finish looks pretty damn good, and that was on fine feed. I tried on medium, no, nah, no, nah, it works, and that was best on fine feed as well. It's just that bit better than medium. It is a small insert, so you can get away with going on fine feed because the cutting area is so much smaller than a, a large one. If you try and use a large radius or a bigger insert on fine feed, it won't work very well because the cuts will tend to overlap each other. You don't want that happening, you want it just to do the cuts uh, pretty much side by side. They'll always overlap a little bit, but you don't want it too much, otherwise it'll just start tearing up the whole job and it won't, won't be a good finish. So. Yeah, that's why quite often, as I said, quite often medium feed with bigger carbide inserts can be the, the best way to go, you know. Fine feed is great for high-speed steel because it doesn't matter. You can just do those fine skims, you know. But um, that's the beauty of high-speed steel, you know. It's not old hat. It's, it's really handy. And, yeah, I know a lot of people just, they do carbide and that's it because it's, it's simple, it's easy, you know, no messing around grinding stuff, but... Yep, teach yourself to grind some high speed steel. You find it invaluable for doing really, really light cuts. And uh, yeah, it's been working over the, over the years and it's still working. Okay, well, what next? Well, I was so impressed with, it, with this insert, that, that one for aluminium. I've left it in the, um, uh, the four way tool post holder permanently because what I tend to do is I'll. I'll have one in there that I can face with and do, you know, uh, horizontal cuts. And then I'll have a finishing cutter, so I'm going to leave this in here for now and I'll be using that quite a bit more, I think. That was really impressive and uh, the TCMT is a good all-rounder. That's a good beginner's insert. That'll do pretty much everything you want and it's pretty durable, you know. Some of the more, you know, say the 30-degree 30, 30 type inserts that you can break them e more easily, they're not as ragged, but um, there's horses for courses with the inserts. You know, you just got to do your research and decide what you want to do. So that's it guys, just a quick update on where things are at and what's uh, happening. And uh, We are progressing, it's going to be slow, but um, yeah, you can't rush these things, you just have to work your way through and it's, uh, it's all going to turn out in the end. Okay, well look, that's it for now. I uh, hope you found it interesting. I'll see you next time. Cheers.